Hello random viewer and welcome to another video, hopefully the first of many, where I start documenting the process of building an aircraft. Obviously this task is quite extensive, I have quite a few chapters to go through, but one of the first issues I ran into was uh, realizing that this shape has to be cut out of foam, and uh, there's not really a foam cutter on the market that is large enough. Just a quick look through Amazon, you, I was able to find this one, but one of the longest single pieces of foam is this main section of this canard, or forward wing. And since this piece of foam is 54 inches long, that's how long the hot wire cutter has to be, to, at minimum, to cut that a foam of that length. When the largest one is not even two feet, yeah, we have an issue. So that was the goal for this first project, to build a foam cutter large enough to be able to cut this length of foam. First of all, we need power. So this is where a modified microwave power transformer comes in. Here I'm wrapping the windings to increase the amperage. Then we have to spray some adhesive on to reattach those things. Nice heavy weight is great for allowing that to cure. Now for the wiring, which will actually plug into the wall, which is a horrifying thought. First of all, I have this long extension cord that was used on Amazon. Just cutting down the length of it to expose the three wires, the grounding wire, the, and the two power leads, which are definitely going to be repurposed for other uses in much of the machine. This process is actually quite time consuming, so I've sped it up 10 times and it still takes forever. Next, we are cutting off the outer casing so that I can actually work with those three wires and then stripping off that outer casing on just the ends so that I can work with the smaller wires in between. Yes, there are wire strippers made for this, but uh, I've always found scissors to be a lot easier. Now I'm splitting off some of these strands and making a loop shape. The idea is to have this loop so that I can put a screw through it and mount it to a motor speed controller. This is the only device I was able to find that can actually handle the amount of power coming out of a socket from the wall, the 120 volts AC. So here I'm removing the screws, the wire goes in with the loop, the screw goes back on, and there are two input sections and two outputs. The idea is I can control the flow of current using that dial on it. Now I needed to start connecting some wires to have some longer lengths, as well as having pieces that could reach to other parts of the machine, which we'll see later. So I just kind of spread apart some of these small copper strands and then started twisting them together. This makes a decent bond, and then you get to see how absolutely terrible I am at soldering, but it got the job done. Next, wrapping it with electrical tape so that it does not short out. That would be far from ideal, and definitely a great way to cause an explosion. I'm also not great with electrical tape, but again, got the job done. Cutting it there. Now for the frame, the actual structure of the cutter. So these are strengthening pieces, one triangle on each end. You'll see how these go together. And here's the basic shape, attaching a long central piece to two arms. So I'm mounting these using a carpenter square to keep them straight, drilling a pilot hole because this is very fragile wood. I do not want it to split and then we will put a screw into this to hold it all together. Putting the screw in gently by hand using a screwdriver is a great way to help prevent the grains of the wood from coming apart. Now the triangle goes on. This is going to give it a significantly more rigidity. Now screws go in. I had five, one on each corner as well as one in the middle. This was mirrored on the other side, leaving two arms to support a cutting wire. The next step was actually holding that cutting wire in place. So this is where some pieces of sheet metal came in. Just drilling some holes and then putting in some screws. The screws anchor it to the wood, but also give me a way of mounting the electrical wire onto the steel so that the electricity can be conducted through the structure and into the wire, hopefully heating it up. Another one of these brackets was mounted onto the lower side of the supporting arm, and then they are bent with a hammer so that they converge in the middle. By having supports on both sides, of the arm, this prevents it from being twisted over time, especially under the tension that this wire is going to be under. So now I'm bending out the sides at the lower end of that bracket even more, and then clamping them together and drilling a hole all the way through. From here, a small piece of electric fence wire goes through, and then I bend this into place as a mount for the wire. On the other side, I have a spring, and I do need to credit Grant Thompson on his video from many years ago that very much helped in just the basic design, although this one is significantly scaled up. With a good test of the spring and structure, it was now safe to start integrating the electronics into it. So here I have the power transformer and the two main power wires coming out, and you can see how they reach around. 
So here's a time lapse of attaching the longer of the two wires to the farthest part of the arm and using zip ties to secure them. Then these exposed wires, after they were stripped from the scissors, are put into the screw and tightened down, allowing the power to transfer through. First time plugging it in, hopefully it does not explode too horribly. Let's see. So, safety glasses are on. We are at minimum power. Okay, here we go. Okay. Nothing happened, that's great. It looks like no current's moving through there. Now I just heard something change. So the little motor controller appears to be making an interesting noise. Oh, there we go. Look at that. It's melting the foam. Not doing a very good job of it, though. <laughs> well, that, that's a good sign. Let's uh, step up the power some more. We don't have enough heat. There's very high power. Still cuts with a lot of resistance. All right, that is maximum power. That's much better. Horrible fumes. And there's those little hairs that we need. Looking at the phone, it's a pretty good cut. Made little hairs, so. I think we're pretty close to ideal temperature at maximum power. Let's shut it off and see how it does. Okay. And we will unplug it. And hopefully it hasn't overheated too much. Transformer's not too bad. How's this guy? Pretty warm. Uh, we're gonna need some cooling for that. But uh, I'd say that's a success. As you can see, the machine worked. Somehow, I was actually quite amazed at that. I was expecting it to explode in my face as uh, some of my other projects have done, sometimes not on purpose. Anyways, besides the point, there are a few modifications that might be necessary. I think a smaller diameter of cutting wire will allow for higher heat concentration as well as a straighter wire for more fine cuts. Also some kind of cooling system just to keep the thing from overheating. I was not burned, I just almost was. So uh, yeah, probably better to get a little bit of cooling in there so the electronics don't fry themselves. So that about wraps up the foam cutter project. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a very nice day.